Hello and welcome to Containers from the Couch. Uh, in today's video, we are gonna show you how to migrate from the Kubernetes cluster autoscaler over to Carpenter for all of your node autoscaling needs. So we're gonna walk through the documentation and we might go a little bit fast uh, just to try to make the video short and concise, but you can pause it and read the docs on your own anytime you want. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see in this cluster, I already have a lot of nodes provisioned and they are being provisioned by the cluster autoscaler, which is running in this cluster right now. So I have some workloads that are just dummy workloads that are forcing the cluster autoscaler to scale up. And in my case, I have about eight nodes that are running and I want to replace the cluster autoscaler for that node scaling over to Carpenter in a cluster that has running workloads. So to do that, we will start over here at carpenter.sh, the website. If you go to getting started in the docs, under here, you will see a section for migrating from cluster autoscaler. This will walk you through all of the steps you need to do to turn off the cluster autoscaler and move to Carpenter for autoscaling needs. Uh, we're gonna do it in a couple of different, I mean, we're gonna follow the docs, but we'll also talk about it as we're going through. And the first thing we need to do is actually create IAM permissions. Uh, we need two different sets of IAM permissions here. One for the nodes that Carpenter is gonna create that need to join our cluster. And one also for Carpenter, the controller itself, which is needs access to AWS to create the nodes for us. So we will start here by making the instance policy for the nodes themselves. And hopefully all of these are just copy pasteable for you. Uh, we're making some assumptions here on this setup as we call them out up here, where you you should already have an OIDC provider, which gives you authentication. Uh, you, we're only using one VPC and one node group right now. If you have more complex setups uh, with multiple you know, subnets, VPC sharing, multiple account spreads, something like that, uh, you'll have to look into some of that as well. But this will give you the basics on how to get it set up. First, we created that policy. Now we're gonna attach uh, all of these existing policies to that IAM role to begin with, or, or just as needed for the, the nodes to be able to use it. This allows each node to create ENIs and things like that inside the cluster. And we have this Carpenter instance policy we need to attach to the role policy because the role is what the uh, EC2 instance actually gets. Sorry, the instance profile. <laughs> uh, here we want to export a couple variables for our workloads. So in this case, uh, we have this. My cluster is called CAS. So we're just going to export that. And then we need to get some information from that cluster itself. Things like where the endpoint is, uh, OIDC, um, that sort of stuff, because we need that for our policies. So we got AWS account ID, OIDC endpoint, and the cluster endpoint. Now this is going to create the actual policy for the controller. Here we have a trust policy uh, that's using that OIDC endpoints that we just grabbed from our existing clusters that we can use what's called IAM roles for pods. Uh, don't worry about it too much, but that's what the controller is going to use. It's going to use a surface account, which then translates into an IAM role. But this gives you all the details. Here's all the permissions that the controller itself is going to use. And here we actually put that policy and IAM role together for the controller. So it's a bunch of steps at once, but it should just give you the IAM permissions you need. When Carpenter is running, it needs to be able to find subnets and security groups so that it can know what <laughs> subnets and security groups your instances should be part of. So we're gonna do that right now. In this case, again, we're only assuming one node group. Uh, we do list them here, but we're actually only taking the first one. So if you have different roles uh, for your node groups in your cluster already, you might have to do some extra work to um, figure out which, which new instance uh, security group you want for the instances that Carpenter is going to provision. And here we save our first node group. Uh, we're gonna use the launch template that's existing for those nodes right now for that node group, security groups, and then create tags so that Carpenter can find those things for us. And here we need to update the 
AWS auth config map. And so this is going to allow any new nodes that try to join the cluster, this auth uh, config map allows those nodes to join. So we can see here, the main thing we need to do is replace, this is just a template, but replace our AWS account ID um, using that role. So any nodes that come in with that Carpenter instance role should be able to join the cluster. First thing I want to do is uh, let's copy that to my clipboard and then config map cube system AWS auth. So I'm going to edit this config map. Be very careful when you are editing it. Um, if you uh, mess this part up, you could also lose some access to the cluster itself. So the part we want to add it to is if we look under here, we have groups. We need to add a new group for this uh, map roles. So, oh, let me, oh, my account ID is already in here. So I will just copy this portion of it, paste this in. Uh, always make sure you get your white space correct. And I will delete that. Oh, and again, make sure that you get those colons right. I have two at the front, one at the end. Uh, so there we go. So now my auth map is configured. We're going to save this out, automatically gets written back, back to the cluster. No nodes are using that yet, but once we deploy Carpenter, they will be. Let's get our current Carpenter version so we know which one we're going to deploy. In this case, we're going to use the Helm chart, but we're going to use it just as a template. And this template is going to generate the YAML into a Carpenter YAML file because um, we are going to edit this a little bit beyond what the Helm chart allows us to do. So we have some values we're going to put in it automatically but again we, we want to set a couple things uh, in addition to that let's open up our config yaml and then what we're going to do here is actually set some node affinity so that our carpenter controller always runs on the node group that is already configured so here we can see um, this is the part we want to match in the deployment there's a node group and if i let's actually That's the node group we want. Um, so if I look at, here's our affinity. Just pasting that node group in here so I have it. Let's go back and grab all of this. Let's get this part down. So what this is saying here is each of these nodes in the node group already have a label. That's just part of having node groups in EKS and they get a label for the node group they're in. So we're telling the Carpenter controller, I only want you to run on that node group that already exists. We don't want Carpenter self-hosting itself on nodes that it also provisioned because you can get in the situation where a node might be going away, Carpenter doesn't have anywhere to run. So we're gonna keep this node group around just in a smaller set of more of these static defined workloads. And now we can deploy Carpenter, create our namespace, uh, create our CRDs uh, that, that for the provisioner for Carpenter, and then actually apply that YAML file. Uh, you can also do this for your critical workloads. If you want to run your um, core DNS, uh, metric server, things like that, that are in the cluster that don't need to auto scale very much. You can also tag them the sim same way with node affinity to match the node group that exists so that they'll always be on a set number of nodes. Looks like everything created here. Uh, one thing we are missing so far is a uh, provisioner. Carpenter doesn't do anything until it knows how to create nodes in the cl cluster. Uh, we're using all of the defaults here and we're just telling it find our subnets that match this label and our security groups that match that label. So now Carpenter has everything it needs 
It's just waiting for workloads that are unschedulable to create workloads. Uh, but Cluster Autoscaler is also running and is waiting for unschedulable pods and creating workloads. So we need to fix that. Here's an example if you want to create for, like I said, um, your critical workloads. Uh, they don't have to be on Carpenter nodes. You can keep a node group around. We recommend having some static amount of compute available in the cluster uh, just for these sorts of things. We're going to remove cluster autoscaler, but we're actually gonna, we're not going to actually remove it. We're just going to scale it to zero so it's not running. So it's still there. If we need to scale it back, if we need to do something else, we can go back up. All of the permissions are still there. The node group's still there. Uh, it can you know, take over in this case of like we need it, um, but it's not running anymore. And this is just an example for uh, one of our node groups. We're going to scale it down to two instances. Uh, early on, I had eight or something like that. I think if I, um, they're all still running. They're still there, all the ones I had before. I haven't done anything to them. Carpenter hasn't done anything to them, uh, but now we're going to force the node group itself in the cluster to scale down to two. As it scales down to two, those workloads still exist. The workloads will become unschedulable because nodes are going away. So Carpenter is going to take over and start scheduling uh, or creating nodes to schedule those workloads. It does take a few minutes for the nodes to actually start to spin down um, as the ASG is, is turning them off. Um, so we will wait for that, but we can look at the Carpenter logs. I see an error, but let's go back and click it. All of our nodes are still there, so we're, nothing's happened yet. And our pods are still running, uh, so we haven't, the auto scaling group hasn't actually started to delete those nodes yet. Nothing's draining just yet. Now we can start seeing them. You see the scheduling disabled. Those are the nodes actually starting to go away. They will cordon themselves first. It means no new nodes are going to come on them. Uh, as you'll see, we have we have two left because we scaled it down to two. So everything except for two um, are going to go away. Once those nodes start to go away, that's when Carpenter is going to take over. It's going to say, oh, I don't have anywhere to stick these workloads because all of the workloads that were there won't fit on two nodes anymore. So Carpenter will have to take over and create nodes for us. Uh, oh, it looks like I already started. Uh, it, one's coming up now. Um, so this unknown cluster or unknown node that just came in eight seconds ago um, was, was one that Carpenter did. Let's look at those logs. So we see created a node with 15 pod requesting a CPU. This is the types that it's looking through, C4 or 4XLs, and 155 other types. My head's blocking it. Um, but Carpenter figured out which instance type would be best fit and also the cheapest for the cluster. And now it went back to waiting for unschedulable pods. So in this case, Carpenter wasn't restricted by what nodes it could pick. So if all of my pending workloads fit onto one node, it created one node because that's what my workload requested. And that node is already ready. Um, so let's see if our pods are actually running. There, some of them are creating. Some of them uh, probably failed at while it was starting up. Oh, they're they're running now. <laughs> I couldn't even do it fast enough. Um, so there we go. We have uh, we replaced. Uh, what was eight nodes in the cluster with now three, um, two of them just in that original node group, and the third is the one that Carpenter created. So it took us uh, about 15 minutes, and we went from cluster autoscaler all the way over to Carpenter for provisioning nodes. Any other information we wanted to do with like sp spread across zones, across host names, we need to define that in our workloads. And there's a couple. Uh, warnings and links to documentation about pod disruption budgets that you'll want to make sure that you're careful of so that you don't uh, take down nodes uh, without having a replacement for them or take down pods 
But other than that, you should be all set to go once you get to this point. You could have Cluster Autoscaler look at that node group only and, and scale that up and down with workloads that are tagged for that node group uh, or, or have an affinity for them, um, which might be something if you do auto scale your like cluster resources. But otherwise, all of your workloads now will be scheduled with Carpenter. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoy Carpenter. If you have any questions about it, feel free to go over to the repo, open an issue, let us know how you want to use it and add comments. We're always looking for feedback there. Uh, if you have any more questions about uh, the show or the channel, uh, you can leave comments here on the video or reach out online, any places. We're doing regular streams here, so subscribe and hope to see you soon.